안녕하십니까? Nicolas in Dine Python is an object-oriented programming language which means that it supports classes. Sometimes when you create a class, you will be doing so to organize and hold structured data. For example, instead of using a dictionary like this, we can use a class like this. The thing is that to define that person class, the code will be longer than when using a dictionary. I know you're not stranger to this. We have all used the init special method before. It is the method we use to initialize a class, and as you can see, it's very repetitive. We have to write the name and last name on the parameters and then assign them to self.name and self.lastName. But what if I told you that we don't have to use the init special method anymore? Enter data classes. Data classes is a module of the Python standard library that helps us write less code when working with Python classes. Using data classes, we can go from this to this. That is much better, right? Just by using the data class decorator and by specifying the name and type of your data, Python will automatically generate the init special method for you. But that is not all. When you create a class without using the data class decorator and you print an instance of that class, you will see something like this in your console. But when you use a data class, you will see something like this on your console. Data classes also allow you to control the way instances are created. With this code, we can create a person using positional arguments or keyword arguments. When using positional arguments, it's very easy to forget what their order is, especially if there are lots of them. When our person class grows, using positional arguments will give you a headache. Tell me what's easier to read and understand. Creating a class using positional arguments or keyword arguments. To force our class to only be created using keyword arguments, all we have to do is add the kw only parameter to the data class decorator. So now, if we try to do this, it won't work. Only this will work. Another cool thing that you can do with data classes is to freeze them, to make them immutable. With this code, if we create an instance of the class, we can later modify its properties if we want to. But if you want to prevent this from happening, if you want your classes to be immutable, to be unmodifiable after they are created, all you have to do is use the frozen parameter. And after doing that, the class will be frozen, immutable. So if you try to do something like this, you will get an error. When creating a data class, you can define default values as well. If you want to specify more advanced default values and configure them individually, you can use the field function. For example, if we wanted to have a record of the date when the object is created, we could do something like this. Here we are using the field function to tell Python that when our person class is initialized, the getTime function should run to get the default value to the created add property. So when we create a new class and print it, created add will be initialized with the output value of the getTime function. Using field is how we can specify default values for list properties. And using field, we can specify which values of the data class should be hidden or shown when we print the class in the console. If we have this class and we print it, we will see all its fields. But if we want to hide some properties like created add, we just have to set the parameter wrapper that stands for representation to false on the field function. And now when we print our class, created add won't be there. The last thing I want to show you about data classes is the post init special method. Sometimes you have a class that has a property that is calculated based on another property. Like this one, for example, where full name should be calculated using the first name and last name. Instead of initializing the class like this, which will be pointless, what we can do is tell Python to not expect full name when the class is being initialized by using the field function with the init parameter set to false. And then we will define a post init special method in our class to initialize the full name property using first name and last name. The post init special method will be called after the init special method. So you can be sure that by the time you access full name, it will already have been defined. 
That's it for this video. I hope that you found it useful and I hope that you start using data classes in your code if you weren't using them already. If you like this content and you would like to see more of it, then please consider leaving a like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what do you think about data classes? Did you know about them? Are you already using them? Are you going to use them? I am very curious to know. And don't forget that if you want to learn things like Python, JavaScript, React, React Native, Go, Dart, Flutter, among many others for absolutely free, all you have to do is click the link below to join any of our many free courses that you can take right now for absolutely free with me. Click on the link below and I will see you there. Onurdo, Hamza Hago, Saranjamida, see you in the next one. Taome Bayo, bye bye.